Hendrix here for Root Junkie. Today going to be looking at the new ROM for the OnePlus One, CM12X. The wait is over for OnePlus One users and we finally have two official Lollipop builds for the OnePlus One, Oxygen OS and CM12S. I found Oxygen OS to be a very snappy ROM, but very early on in its development cycle, its team's gonna have a long time before it has the feature list that options like CM have. But today we're gonna be looking at CM12S, the true successor to CM11S, the KitKat option that One Plus One users had. This is a brand new install on my One Plus One, and as you can see, when you first boot it up, you get a brand new boot animation showcasing Saijin's new logo. Once the boot is finally finished, you're met with Saijin OS's welcome screen. After that, it's much the same as any Lollipop ROM signing into your accounts and such. Because this is a Saijin OS ROM, you do have the option to sign in with a Saijin OS account. This will give you the option to use some of their features, such as their brand new app called Batten, which is a cloud service. After that, you do have the option to opt in to send them bug reports to use their Hexo theme, which looks really nice, and we'll get to that later. Use the on-screen navigation bar because, as you know, OnePlus One users do have the option to use capacitive buttons or navigation buttons on the screen. I personally use the capacitive buttons. And to use secure SMS. After that, you're met with the Trebuchet Launcher, and if you're used to this launcher, then you'll be used to all the features that it has. It does have a decent amount, but I personally use Nova. The next thing we're going to look at here is the navigation bar. If you pull it down, you'll go ahead and see some of the Hexo theme and its blackout navigation bar, which I think looks really sexy. If you hit the system button, you'll also find that the system is blacked out and themed. And this is where you're going to find all your features. The wireless and network features are all the same that you'll find on any Lollipop ROM. When you get to the device settings is where you'll find the unique features. Hitting display and lights will give you the option to use features such as double tap to wake and double tap to sleep, which I personally use all the time, alongside ambient display, which I don't. While we're here, I might as well go ahead and show you that the lock screen is actually a transparent by default. You can change this in the theme settings, which we'll get to in a second. And the last thing in the display and light settings is the calibration, which is really nice to have since some screens might have a certain hue to them. If you hit the theme options, you'll find the new theme engine, which I think looks really good and allows you to switch between profiles really quickly. It also allows you to change individual assets of each theme. By clicking on the little wrench, you can change the assets individually. Note that this will change them system-wide, which is really nice for the icons specifically, because if you change the icon pack, it'll go all the way across the system and not just on your launcher. And for Google Wear users, it'll also extend to your watch. Next thing we're going to look at here is the gesture supports, which if you click on it, you can see that you can activate the camera, music, and the flashlight just by doing certain gestures on the lock screen. I personally don't use these features just because I've accidentally set off the flashlight in my pocket before. The button controls will give you full reign over what the capacitive buttons do, and that's all the device settings. Next we're going to look at the personal settings, which start off with Saijin Mods profiles. After that, you see the status bar options, which are the basic for Saijin mod, such as your clock settings, moving it to the right, left, or center, the AM, PM settings, the battery status style, and the percentage options. Next is the notification drawer settings, which if you click on, you'll find the quick pull down options, the option to show the weather, and the quick setting panel options. All the other settings are the exact same on any other CM ROM. If I click on the about phone, you'll find that this is Android 5.0.2, not 5.1 yet. When it comes to pre-installed app, most are the same, but there are a few exceptions, such as Saijin Mods Equalizer, the new service called Batten, which allows you to pick up and move any progress that you've made on any app to a different device, as long as you have a Saijin Mod account. The next main one's gonna be the camera here, which is the OnePlus One camera. I personally find that this camera has a lot more options than the regular Google camera, such as the option for the 13 megapixel pictures and the 4K recording. I also think that the interface looks better. The next main thing here is going to be the gallery, which is OnePlus One's gallery, which I think works really well. Normally I use Quick Picks, but when installing this ROM, I only use this gallery. The only other thing to really point out here is that this app does come pre-installed with a recorder, which is really handy for anybody like me who does a lot of recording on their phone. So there you have it, a review of the ROM that's going to be my daily driver for the foreseeable future. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more awesome Android device videos. And go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. I want to know what your favorite feature on any ROM is. And until next time, Hendrix out.